Approximately 100 million people worldwide are affected by cognitive impairment or dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. If Alzheimer's were a country, it would be the 16th most populous. In high-income countries, promising innovations such as blood tests, biological drugs and preventive interventions are propelling the diagnosis and treatment of Alzheimer's disease into an entirely new and exciting realm. However, make no mistake, the old needs of patients will not disappear anytime soon. This series on Alzheimer's disease is based on the premise that patients will only be able to fully benefit from recent innovations if general practitioners and dementia specialists are fully proficient in the less spectacular but steady advances that the dementia specialist community has made over the past few decades in the care and treatment of behavioral disorders, in the use of diagnostic imaging and laboratory tools, and in psychosocial interventions. This series has the ambitious goal of leveling the playing field so that patients in all countries can benefit from current and future innovations. The first paper focuses on diagnostics. Traditionally, dementia and Alzheimer's disease has been diagnosed based on syndromes. And the introduction of biomarkers already many years ago has uh, stimulated a more biological concept of Alzheimer's disease where biomarkers are used to determine the underlying biology of a cognitive syndrome. This has stimulated discussions around the pathway of care, how to identify a patient early already at the stage uh, of primary care and then how to transfer this patient to the memory clinic and what needs to be done in the memory clinic to come up with an etiological diagnosis which eventually qualifies for the right treatment. Blood-based biomarkers will be crucial in this development because they will allow a detection of, of pathology on a wider scale and already earlier in this diagnostic pathway. Tau plays a crucial role in Alzheimer's disease. The extent of tau spread in the brain actually determines the symptomatology of Alzheimer's disease and maybe even predict treatment response to new treatments. Tau PET is available in research and has provided fundamental knowledge about uh, the evolution of Alzheimer's disease and it is also ready to go uh, in clinical practice. And we hope that uh, tau PET will become a standard tool uh, in memory centers, in expert centers, to even better understand the individual patient's pathology and to even, even better uh, define the indication for a certain treatment. We are now finally entering a new era of treatments for Alzheimer's disease. The recently licensed anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies represent the first ever disease-modifying therapies for Alzheimer's. Large, well-conducted trials have shown that these therapies slow the progression of early Alzheimer's disease by about a quarter to one-third, the equivalent of delaying cognitive and clinical decline by about four to six months over 18 months of treatment. And these therapies are therefore clearly not cures, but they're also not without side effects most important of which is ARIA, amyloid-related imaging abnormalities, which in the pivotal trials occurred in 12 to 24% of treated patients. Most resolve spontaneously or with treatment pauses, and most are asymptomatic, but they can be clinically serious and rarely even fatal. These therapies are also not without burden for patients and healthcare systems, as they currently require frequent intravenous infusions and regular MRI brain scans. Nonetheless, they do represent a major advance after years of failed treatments and trials, and hopefully these will be the first of many advances, more effective, less burdensome, and safer therapies. These treatments are not a substitute for the wider management of patients with Alzheimer's disease that includes the use of symptomatic therapies that offer modest cognitive benefit. It also includes a hugely important management of non-cognitive symptoms, the behavioral and psychological symptoms that can be so distressing but where there have been advances over the last decades. All of which needs to be part of the wider care, counseling and support of patients and families. This new era should also be a catalyst for earlier, 
more accurate diagnosis, and better care generally. And I hope an end to the therapeutic nihilism that all too often has been associated with dementia. Experts are still debating the very clinical construct of Alzheimer's disease, as the way we conceptualize the disease has profound implications for the use of monoclonal antibodies and for future preventive pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic interventions. In the third paper of the series, we describe the three main approaches to the Alzheimer's conundrum. One centered on the disease itself and its biology, the second centered on patients and their needs, and the third centered on the population and the global quality of life of society at large. And we also highlight the common and the specific features of the three approaches that have the potential to contribute to decreasing the burden of the disease and the associated individual and societal suffering. Further, we offer a realistic appraisal of the clinical benefits of the new anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies for Alzheimer's and claim their non-inferiority when compared to homologous drugs for cancer, multiple sclerosis, and rheumatoid arthritis. Whether society wishes to pay the associated costs is a political rather than a clinical discussion. And last, we address cutting-edge prevention strategies that are being developed on persons without any cognitive or memory impairment, but at high risk for dementia, and outline the new brain health services, and the new patient journey that is being developed in a number of clinical centers worldwide. New advances in diagnosis with blood biomarkers, treatment with monoclonal antibodies, and prevention with multi-domain interventions are paving the way for a completely new scenario for the care of patients with Alzheimer's disease and those at risk. The authors of this series on Alzheimer's published by The Lancet believe that only a concerted and determined effort by the medical community and civil society together will enable our current and future patients to fully benefit from the potential of scientific and technological advances.